Hello and welcome to the Bergen Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Hannah Bergen, and today's podcast is all about putting your mind at ease for your upcoming High Rocks event. So without further ado, these are the things that you didn't know that you needed to hear before your upcoming High Rocks event. First thing that I want to touch on is that you are more prepared words. You are more prepared than you think for your upcoming High Rocks event. And it's so easy as humans to think that you're so underprepared when actually you've put some hard work in. And if you haven't, then that's a reflection for upcoming events. But just know that you've probably done a lot more than you think and you are probably more prepared, prepared than you think. And on the topic of High Rocks, we need to establish just how difficult High Rocks is as a race. Like sure, it's become mainstream. So a lot of people are talking about it and we can forget that actually High Rocks being 8k of running plus the rock zone plus eight different workout stations that includes a sled push that isn't light it's heavy weight what you are doing alone even entering it or even turning up to your race is amazing so if you don't feel prepared and you're still putting yourself in that position where you're completing a really difficult sporting event then hats off to you just for making the start line and on that topic as well is your body the ability for you to even be able to complete something as intense as high is incredible that you're even be able to stand on that start line and put your body through this so massive massive well done for building a resilient body to allow you to do this so first of all just please appreciate that Also, at this moment in time, if you still don't feel as if you've put enough training in, don't worry about it. Obviously, it's not ideal, but certain things can happen in life. Certain stresses can happen that can impact negatively how much time that you can put onto things like training for a high. If it is a case of um, you're completely to blame and you've been lazy with your training, then that's just something that you can take on board for your upcoming events after this one. But what I want you to focus on is what you might not have physically um, for example, what you the adaptations physically that you haven't been able to make due to the lack of training, make up for it mentally. So don't get into that race and think of all those sessions that you missed. Think of the sessions that you did do. Don't go into that race thinking, God, I'm so underprepared. I'm going to fail this. This is going to be so bad, blah, blah, blah. Because what will happen then is you'll just give yourself a lot of negative self-talk during the race, and that's not going to help you anyway. The fact of the matter is... <laughs> You know what you've signed up to. You're doing a higher. You're doing 8K of running at least. You're doing the rock zone. You're doing eight, st- uh, eight strength stations. Regardless of what's going on up here in your mind, you've got to do that anyway. So try and make it more uh, at ease from the mindset perspective as much as you can to outweigh that lack of physical uh, training that you might have done. Um, if you have done a lot of training, then well done to you. Kudos to you. But remember that some things can happen in your high rocks race that you didn't foresee happening. So be prepared to make those in race decisions that you might not have thought that you would need to make. This could be as simple as feeling like you need to take on more water than usual because those venues are very hot. So if you're used to training in a venue that's not hot and you're not sweating so much, then you might not need to take on as much water. But this podcast isn't about that, so I'm not going to go into detail with that. But just know that in the race, you might have to make decisions to do things slightly different than you might have done in training. It could be as simple as changing up your technique for something to help you get through that station. It could be something as simple as the sleds that you train with uh, slightly narrower than the ones in actual high rocks. Don't get in your head about it. It is what it is. Just figure out how you can get through that station the best way that you can and just keep going with it. Don't get negative about these things that you didn't foresee happening. Instead, be more solution focused and think, right, okay, this is the fact of the matter is that this sled feels different. But what am I going to do to get through it so that I can just tick that off, tick it off my to-do list and get on with the next Hyrox element that I have got to attack? My next message is to the injured Hyroxers or the niggled Hyroxers. If you are going to your Hyrox event, your upcoming Hyrox event, and you're feeling like your body is able to do it um, safely, so you've been given the clear to be able to do it safely, but you might be carrying um, a niggle or you might be sort of part way towards a rehab program um, that means that you can race in your high rocks but you're not going to be in optimal condition to be able to race for a pb the best thing to do is to accept that to acknowledge the fact that you might not be able to push for those pbs but just enjoy the fact that your body is able to do this competition and be excited about the future rather than frustrated about the present so think right it's annoying that i can't reach peak performance maybe even you've got an illness that come, crops up and you, you have like a, I don't know, a cold or something during just before your event. Just accept your situation for what it is, but just be excited for the future, that in future Hyroxes, 
you might not be dealing with the same thing. And that is exciting because just imagine what future you can achieve with your high rocks. But don't get too engrossed within that now. The fact of the matter is it is what it is. Go to that race, do what you can. And that brings me to my final point on this is do the best that you can on the day. So as long as you know that you've given it your all, don't compare to what anybody else is doing. Don't look on social media or other people's times. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Your race is your race. Your situation is your situation. Nobody knows what's going on in your head. Nobody knows what's going on physically with you. Just do the best that you can and reach that finish line knowing that you were proud of yourself for A, putting yourself into the High Rocks race in the first place. B, doing the best that you could on the day, whatever that might look like for you. And sometimes the races come together, sometimes they don't. But we learn from those races that don't go our way. And we just input all of that information in the way that we kind of perceive that race into our training for the upcoming one and use it as determination and motivation. Now I've got that little pep talk out of the way, I want to move on to five top tips for your upcoming High Rocks event. So first of all is to familiarize yourself with the course and the number of laps. This is something that people still get wrong, even when they see how many laps are required of them. So make sure you've got your head around it. If you don't have your, like when you get to the venue, double check it, triple check it with the um, judges there or volunteers. Um, next up is don't put a time pressure on your performance, particularly for first timers. So each course is very different with how the track uh, feels. So some courses are faster than others. They have less corners. They have less laps. Some courses have more people on the track. So you're having to weave more and more. So your line of running's not as, as easy in terms of, uh, picking up those one K's in between the stations. Um, and sometimes the sleds just feel really heavy in some venues and people still don't know why that is. But uh, the key thing is, is not to put time pressure on a performance, particularly if you're a first timer, because you don't have a clue what you're expecting. And even if you've done simulations beforehand, those simulations often don't have a massive rock zone. Um which will add time onto your event. But also there's loads of other factors such as uh, adrenaline, which have a part to play uh, in terms of performance. So don't put a time pressure, particularly on your first performance. Um, trust your body and yourself. So trust that the training that you've done has equipped your body in the best way possible for you for this race. And I always go through a mental rehearsal when I get to events where I'll think about the exact uh, chronological order of how it's going to go. I'll come out, I'll think about the laps in my head, I'll think about where I'm going to be for the exercises, the stations, where I need to go for the out, um, and I'll play it into my head over and over again so I feel really prepared when I'm on that start line. Um, I touched on it earlier, be prepared to make in-race decisions and not to expect a smooth race. Many things can happen during high rocks, um, so make sure that you are adaptable and you're solution driven rather than problem focused. And think of that finish line feeling, what you want to feel when you get there um, and sort of use your performance and your in-race um, certain situations and how you feel. Uh, think about how you want to feel at the end and respond to them in that way. Um, so yeah, they are my top tips. Um, my next one would be to accept that there's probably going to be a time during your high rocks where it feels like it was really difficult. Um, and you probably might even question why you've signed up to it. Um, but just keep going. Just remember that you signed up to this. You wanted to see what you were capable of. Um, and nothing worth feeling like an achievement comes easy. So work hard for it. And just know, as I was saying earlier, you know what you need to do. Those eight stations will not change. That 8K will not suddenly become 5K. You know exactly what you need to do. Um, you're going in knowing what you need to do. So just try and make it um, as mentally, um, what's the word, like able um, as you possibly can to keep a strong mindset where possible. So I hope, I hope this episode's been useful for you. Um, I hope that it's given you a bit of appreciation for the fact that you're even doing this upcoming High Rocks. Um, I will be posting more podcasts up onto um, many platforms uh, very soon. I'll be starting some different series um, for these podcasts. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to get this one out there so that you could... Um, listen to it before your upcoming High Rocks race because I know that Birmingham is this weekend and the UK High Rocks season is very close to being underway and I wanted to get this podcast out there before the start of this season. Um, I also didn't choose these curtains in the background. <laughs> I don't know who did. I'm in rented accommodation at the moment. Um, so yeah, that wasn't my choice just in case you're wondering um, what my 
taste of household attire is um i don't know where i'm going with that i'm going off tangent um but yeah <laughs> anyway i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found value in it if you listen to it please do let me know share it with people who are also competing in their high rocks because i hope that i've given you some um good tips and also a little bit of a pep talk along the way for your upcoming race and i hope now that you feel a lot more calm about your upcoming race and good luck massive massive good luck Thank you for listening. Goodbye, and I will chat to you very soon. What was that?